What is going on, everyone? It's your host, Spencer Murray, back again with a long-awaited episode of the NBL Blitz podcast. It is December 22nd, and we're getting near that Christmas holiday, New Year's area, and we've got a lot in store for you here on tonight's show. Um, it's been a while, so in order to kind of catch up and throw some big stories together, I'm going to bring you a new No Huddle segment where I touch on some of the big stories that have passed here the last few weeks in the NBL and um, give you my opinion on each one in a quick and friendly manner. I'm also going to hit on some huge free agent signings for certain teams and how it affects their run at the playoffs and possibly a Super Bowl for some of those teams. I'm also going to touch on Adrian Peterson and his new home, which as many of you know is New England and I'm going to show you some footage of that uh, some reporters caught of him walking into a, uh, a building in downtown Foxborough near the stadium to meet with the owner there and um, last but not least I'm going to touch on some great draft picks and then touch on the Super Bowl odds a bit and give you my couple of picks that I've already posted on Daddy Leagues myself but I figured I'd go ahead and throw them to you here and talk about some of these odds. Uh, stay tuned. And as we begin the show, we're going to begin here with the No Huddle, which starts right now. Uh, news over the offseason is Amari Cooper suspended for 10 games here in the NBL season. And with that, the Raiders decided to go all in on French, or free agents. Uh, they signed Tyler Eifert, John Brown, Jordy Nelson, and even pick up a good defensive player in Darian Stewart, making big moves to um, sort of alleviate the pressure from losing Cooper. The wide receiver core was young there outside of Amari. They let Crabtree walk in free agency. Smart move for the Raiders. They're only a year out of the AFC Championship round. Last year was a rough year, but the talent's still there, and clearly they're ready to spend the money and get back into it. Um, also, over the offseason, Arizona's former quarterback, Carson Palmer, retires, leaving Arizona in a tough spot. They trade up to the third round or the third overall draft pick and draft quarterback Allen James at LSU 66 monster rocket arm great um, great accuracy for his age and coming into this league ready to throw the ball at a tough NFC West division and ready to make plays uh, another big story draft wise Carolina Panthers ended up with three first round draft picks they drafted a corner a halfback and I believe it was a defensive lineman great pickups for this young team they definitely need that cornerback help with um, the loss of Ben Wickery. I believe that's his name. Um, they let him walk, and now they're rebuilding that defensive back core from the ground up. Great pickup, Dre Gatewood. Uh, running back, letting Jonathan Stewart walk, bringing in Heath Stewart, or Stephen Heath, my bad. Stephen Heath. I've read that wrong. Um Again, keeping Cameron Artis Payne as the second string running back. And the defensive lineman DeMarcus Minifield, big beast, ready to go in the trenches. Uh, number four, the Dolphins did not draft a QB with the number one overall pick. Everyone expected that to be the last year Tannehill had. But I guess they're letting him have one more chance. And they drafted a cornerback, number one overall. Great player. Um... I don't think that was a smart move. You guys know me. You guys know how I love smart picks. Cornerback was not the way to go. You needed your QB there. There was four great QBs in this draft, and that was your one chance. Who knows what's going to happen next year? Who knows if the QBs are going to be great, if they're going to be mediocre? This was the year to take it. You missed your shot. Last but not least, Lions. Big offseason moves. Cut Golden Tate. Cut Marvin Jones. Get another first-round pick from the Bengals to move up. Draft two stud wide receivers. They now have the youngest, most NFL-ready wide receiver core in the NBL. Outside of the wide receiver that the Lions drafted last season, they now have two first-round baller talents ready to go in the NFC North. Stafford's still got weapons. Look out, guys, up there. As I mentioned before at the beginning of the show, before I started with the No Huddle segment, I was talking about Adrian Peterson and his new home. Uh, here's the footage here of Adrian Peterson walking in to meet his new owner in New England. Take a look. Yeah. 
you can see a lot of reporters and a lot of news outlets were already on it they knew peterson was going to be there you know it, it wasn't a very quiet situation ap was clearly done in minnesota minnesota actually let both mckinnon and Peterson go, and they brought in Trey Mason and veteran LaShawn McCoy in the offseason. So they're clearly looking to change direction there. Uh, but Adrian Peterson now in New England, uh, that's huge news. You know, the Garrett Blunt got a little bit older. Adrian Peterson's 33. They signed him to a two year deal. Adrian Peterson feels he can still play. He's still got the power. He can stay healthy. And New England's going for it. In the first round, they drafted a, a great tight end, Stanley Corliss. Um, he's been phenomenal. Uh, they also signed another tight end in the offseason, brought a guy in on a six-year deal. These guys are up front, ready to run block and make passes. This New England offense is going to run a lot of two tight end sets. They're going to be ready to go. Adrian Peterson is going to have plenty of opportunity to prove that he is there and ready to play. Uh, I'm personally excited for it. The uh, The AFC East is always a tough race, um, you know, and we always get – an inside view there on the building of the franchise with New England Patriots. So it's going to be nice to see how the owners and, and the staff there in New England work Adrian Peterson into this offense. Even though he has lost a little speed and lost a little bit of step, he still believes he's got enough talent to be that number one there, take LeGarrette Blunt's spot from him, and make sure that this New England's offense can produce. Um, they, they've got the young quarterback. The wide receiver core is a little young. They brought him to Anthony Thomas in the offseason. Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of possibility for issues with that wide receiver core because of the the young, because of the age level, because of the lack of ability, lack of talent. There's no real clear cut superstar there. But with Adrian Peterson in the backfield, I don't think there's much to worry about as long as these receivers can catch check down passes and you know the the occasional medium to deep throw uh new england's gonna be looking short the tight ends are going to be more heavily featured they're going to be the ones getting the catches these wide receivers aren't going to see anything uh d'anthony thomas might see a lot of action as a kick returner uh, as even as possible eventually number one i do believe he's got the uh, uh the ability to run those routes and catch those passes that a lot of those receivers can't so keep an eye on new england Definitely something going on up there. They're, they're cooking up the right recipe, and it looks like they're ready to take this season head on. Let's take a quick break here. I'm going to remind you guys, if you haven't yet, to hit that like button and subscribe to this channel. Um, also, if you have a Twitter account, you can follow us at Bomber League and at MBL Network. Plenty of content from August to August. Uh, we are constantly running on 100% during Madden season and you will not be disappointed you know as I was talking about Adrian Peterson there just a second ago clearly a huge free agent signing this past offseason uh, you know it's been a while since there's been any coverage on this and um, so catching up on all this over the offseason huge free agency signings for a lot of teams I'm going to bring up this graphic here a few big key signings mainly offensive players here but there are a few, there's a few defensive players as you can see but huge signings uh, quarterback you've got Tyrod Taylor moving from Buffalo to Tennessee that I cannot wrap my mind around you've got a young Marcus Mariota yes you need a backup quarterback but I don't think you go out and get Tyrod who still believes he's a starter that could cause a, for, uh, a future quarterback controversy there uh, Marcus Mariota clearly is the answer he's young he's got the talent He's still got plenty of potential and, and a high ceiling. And Tyrod being there just maybe causes him to be a little stressed out on his toes. You know, a young guy shouldn't be feeling that pressure this early on in his career. Um, Tony Romo from leaves Dallas after the, um, you know, the up and coming of, of Dak Prescott. Moves to Chicago. Now, Chicago claims that Jay Cutler is their man and they go and sign Tony Romo. Uh, I haven't seen any official statement from Draco or the Bears yet. I haven't really noticed one. But that tells me that they're not confident in Jay Cutler. Both of these quarterbacks are also very injury prone, which is a big deal. Uh, it's very hard to find a, a backup quarterback that stays healthy. And Romo is definitely not one to take a hit and get back up. So keep an eye on that situation there in Chicago. Another thing, uh, another next nine down, Drew Brees. Uh, leaves New Orleans, you know, of course they got the rookie, 
They didn't need Drew Brees. His contract was taking up way too much space. They let him go. Jacksonville le- lets Blake Bortles go in the offseason, who ends up in Atlanta. And as you can see, Matt Ryan moves from Atlanta to Buffalo. But Drew Brees in Jacksonville is huge. He's still got, you know, two to three years left, if not more. This guy stays healthy. This guy stays on point. He's ready to go. And in Jacksonville, with that young wide receiver core, there's endless possibilities in the AFC South. You know, Doughboy and um, the Texans and Wildcats and the Titans, you know, two top teams. But now Jacksonville has firepower with that offense. Drafted a great rookie running back. So they have Yeldon in this new running back. There's plenty of opportunity for Jacksonville to make a push in the AFC South. Moving on down to wide receiver, as I touched no huddle, um, Oakland signed two, one veteran wide receiver who still has a little bit left in the tank of what he believes, and one great young speedy wide receiver in John Brown. Um, you know, this is a good way to alleviate the pressure of Cooper being suspended for 10 games. Uh, they're definitely going to need someone to step up and I think Tyler Eifert's going to be that guy. You know, you don't see him on this graphic because it didn't get too deep into every position. But Tyler Eifert in Oakland is huge. Clive Walford is actually down at the moment with an injury. So Eifert is clearly going to be the number one tight end and be the number one guy there. That's going to be somebody to watch out. AFC West is going to have a lot of problems. I know Kansas City is really weak at the linebacker core right now. They don't have, you know, any clear-cut superstar Eifert is going to cause an issue there. Um, it's just, there's too much talent on this Oakland offense for nothing to happen this year. Like I said, they're one year removed from an AFC championship run, and they're trying to stay in it, and this was the way to go. Uh, as you can see down the line, Brandon Marshall, Tennessee. Tennessee made some great free agency signings, but the downside to it was the players that they did pick up were a little on the older side. Brandon Marshall being one of those guys, 35, 36-year-old wide receiver, not very speedy, sure hands, you know. Tennessee went and drafted a star wide receiver in in Gabe Williams, and I believe that's what his name was. And they've got Brandon Marshall there. I'm guessing he's going to be their go-to red zone possession guy that's going to go up and grab the ball and bring it down on those fade routes, those quick out routes. He's going to be the guy that catches the ball in the end zone for this team. Moving on to Larry Fitz. Uh, Buffalo is taking some chances with these older wide receivers. You know, a couple seasons back, they brought in Roddy White. He was doing enough, but he wasn't making that much of an impact as in scoring and, you know, being clutch and in those positions to make those great plays. They bring in Larry Fitzgerald, Arizona, you know, loved receiver in Arizona. And Larry just, they, they couldn't come to a deal They didn't want to take a chance on an older player, so they let him walk. Buffalo brings him in. Buffalo loves these older vets to come in. And uh, apparently Sammy Watkins must need a little bit more help because I don't see their reason to go get uh, an older guy like this that's, you know, slowly getting weaker, slower, you know, getting older. And, you know, a lot of people don't like to hear that. But this is huge. Uh, We'll have to watch this one and see what happens. But... In my opinion, you know, which is a big part of the show, I don't think that was that great of a signing for Buffalo. Uh, moving over to the halfback, uh, as you can see, Adrian Peterson there, one of the key signings. Thomas Rawls uh, leaving Seattle. They drafted Titus Roth. They've got C.J. Procise. Not much room there for Thomas Rawls, you know, with, with him wanting a lot of money with the talent that he has. So they let him walk. Baltimore comes in, grabs the guy, this is a great pickup for Baltimore. They've been running back. Uh, they've been weak at running back for a while, and this guy's going to come in and play day one and make a lot of noise in the AFC North. Huge signing though. Detroit gets Jeremy Hill. Uh, this guy, he can he can run. He runs hard. Cincinnati was having. Cincinnati let a lot of people go. You know they were trying to keep their money uh, smart. They weren't trying to spend a lot of money on these players and not have enough later on. Jeremy Hill, I believe it was a five-year deal in Detroit. Huge signing for the Lions. You know, this young wide receiver core, now a, a youngish running back. They're ready to move back into number one. Well, they are. They were number one in the NFC North. The Bears made really bad on my prediction last year of them winning the NFC North. I actually believe that once I made that prediction, the Bears started to play worse and slowly fell out of that. 
possible division win. So Bomber clearly making a statement saying, this is my division. You're going to have to come through this offense, and he's going to make some noise. Uh, defensively, you know, not a lot of big signings. A lot of these guys are a little bit on the older. Brandon Graham going from Philly to Buffalo. DeAndre Levy leaving Detroit, going to Atlanta. Uh, Demarcus Lawrence going to Washington was a pretty nice signing. Washington had a great offseason, uh, great free agency, uh, grabbed some players, filled some positional needs, great draft. Now I'm going to hit on that here in a second. But look for Washington to slowly take control in the NFC East. You know, Dallas has a hard time. They, they don't have a hard time getting to the playoffs, but they have a hard time finishing in the playoffs. And I do believe that this Washington Redskins team will be able to finish if they get that chance. So keep an eye on the Redskins and keep an eye on all these players here. And um, they'll definitely be making some noise. Late, throughout the season, I'll be touching on a lot of these guys, recapping how far their season's going. And I really look forward to seeing how some of these moves for these teams pan out. As I just mentioned in the last segment about free agents, Washington drafts, their, their draft was phenomenal. Um, one of their guys, Lindsey Kaiser, great steal uh, through in, later in the draft. And not too late, but, you know, um, a lot of teams had their eye on this guy. They didn't think that he was going to get early round potential, be noticed early. Uh, Washington took that chance. And this kid's phenomenal. He's, he's day one ready to play. Great tackler. Easily sheds blocks. You know, he, he could get to the quarterback if necessary, but he's going to be great in coverage and stopping the run. A few teams made some great picks this year. Smart picks. Uh, you know, last season there's a lot of corners gone in the first round this year. There's some great, smart, solid picks for some of these teams. Um, got a couple graphics here that will eventually come, or just one graphic for the main player that I think was a great choice. But just to name off a few of these guys here, um, Traylon Goods in Denver, you know, they, they really wanted Corliss. They had their eyes on him. They were, they were hoping he'd fall, but uh, New England really wanted to take that shot on that two tight end set and get this stud. And Corliss went to New England. Goodson, almost just as good, comes to Denver automatically making plays in the preseason uh new england of course drafting stanley corliss great pickup uh cleveland as you can see here kendall bryan great quarterback pick you know everyone was shocked that they didn't go with trey mcintyre last year with a number one pick and you know a year later they still get a great quarterback he's quick gonna be perfect for this offense you know a lot of these guys are are fast and, and make quick decisions and this guy's gonna fit right in to the rebuild going on in Cleveland that's not too far away from being complete. San Diego gets a steal uh, later on and grabs EJ Fair, middle linebacker. Great guy. You know, a lot of people had him projected to go into the fourth, go in the fourth round, um, but some teams really take risks, and this one paid off. This guy, starter day one, making big plays. San Francisco gets there. Um, Successor to Navarro Bowman as, as he's nearing the end of his career, getting older up there. Jamal Blades, great pick. This guy's fast. He tackles, great in coverage, ready to make plays. This guy's going to be a great leader on that defense that's slowly being rebuilt and worked from the ground up. Uh, and last but not least, uh, Dawson Wiley, Heisman winner, drops down mid-first round. Tampa Bay swoops him up. These, this guy... He was a definite top five pick, but the top five teams didn't need a safety. And now Tampa Bay has yet another great defensive player that is just phenomenal. You know, last year they drafted Kyle Dell, and he's making huge plays for a linebacker. You know, pick sixes and and uh, easy interceptions, and now they got a, a lurking safety in the backfield. Tampa Bay is slowly getting things right. Um, there in the NFC South. Uh, just to touch on, on a few more, you know, I mentioned earlier Tennessee drafted Gabe Williamson, stud wide receiver, ready to go, complements that offense. Um, with Brandon Marshall there, this guy's going to learn the game quick and easy and is going to be a force to reckon in the AFC South. And then uh, Baltimore, their stud safety here, as you can see, crazy pick. Um, no one expected it. You know, a lot of people expect corners or some kind of offensive monster. And this safety 
is just off the wall usually and this was a smart pickup by Baltimore. Now last but not least to finish it off we uh, just recently daddy leagues or on daddy leagues the Super Bowl odds for each team were released through the NBL you know the NBL betting Twitter account and I gotta say some of these are a little questionable uh, no offense to these guys but I think the Washington Redskins 10 to 1 is a little too early for that yes there's the talent Yes, he's making some noise, but DK is still there in the NFC East. That team is still going to dominate, and I don't see him not making the Super Bowl. I, I see him not winning the Super Bowl, but he's definitely going to make the Super Bowl as long as that team stays together and healthy. Um, if you guys want, in my opinion, um, you know the Steelers are going to make it in the AFC. There is no one yet to step up to the plate to challenge him harder or to challenge the Steelers remotely hard enough. So uh, my picks this season were the Broncos at 20 to one and the Cardinals at uh, let's see here. They're a hundred to one, you know, the, the Cardinals great draft. That quarterback is definitely somebody they needed somebody tall. that can see over the offensive line, make the throws to these young receivers. Uh, you never know. The NFC West is up for grabs. And um, it's an easy way into the playoffs, and then it's just a couple steps to the Super Bowl. Uh, it could happen, and it never hurts to take a chance. Uh, Denver clearly um, clearly took control of the AFC West quickly. Um, the, the Chargers are up there too, but I have a feeling Denver comes with some fire this year. You know, early news out of this week so far is that Denver has lost to the San Francisco 49ers, which is a huge shocker, but it's just the first game of the season. This gives them the chance to right the ship and get everything going the right way. Um, you know, uh, make sure you guys get your picks in on, on the website. Um, I believe actually disregard that they were closed. They, they closed at 10 EST, uh, on the 22nd. My apologies for that. But good luck to all you guys there that have the picks. Um, look forward to see how many people got it right. Uh, thanks for tuning in. You know, it, it, it took a while for me to get this episode out. And again, I apologize for all the ones that were waiting patiently. But uh, we are back on regular schedule and look forward to the next episode. Uh, also, stay tuned for the first ever live Commissioner's Corner podcast coming up uh, after the holiday weekend also nbl live starts again soon we've got a few games lined up keep your eyes out and on the twitter account for that uh, so thanks for listening and i look forward to bringing you guys more news next time